people of the purple butterfly here otherwise known as people of seven on twitter and youtube people are elsewhere or on the internet my blog is located at purple butterfly dash people dot black spot dot com my soap purple butterfly soaps could be located at people dot etsy dot com and my t-shirt designs purple butterfly dash people dot tmail dot com i'm here to show you how to make a peacock tool without having to spend a whole bunch of money on the ones that are available at places like bamba berry and they're short I went to buy that particular tool way back in the day when they first um, you know came out with them I have a five pound slap mode and the peacock tool stops this much I mean literally the entire bottom of your soap won't have a design that don't work for me so I made my own and made a soap and everybody loved it and it's been years since I did that so now I need to make another tool so that way I can make this new soap and I figure I'd take you with me so here's what we're going to do first we're going to get a car piece of cardboard that's the width of your slab mode um, give or take or inch my slab mode stops right about there okay so the uh, like, hold on. I keep getting this just in reverse of what I'm used to, but see that? So I'm going to have about two inches on either side. That's fine. Borders are good. Make sure that your corrugated cardboard or whatever um, medium you use to do this, whether it be corrugated cardboard that's made of plastic or corrugated cardboard that's made of paper. You want to make sure you have lines this big or larger. Okay. You're going to need some duct tape or some um, cellophane tape. You're going to need a package of skewers. Go to Walmart or um, Kroger's or someplace. Get the kind of skewers that's made for cooking. On the back of it, it'll say to minimize scorching, soak in water for 20 minutes before use. When you see that, you know you got the right kind, but we're not going to use it for that purpose, so to ignore the soaking in 20 minutes part. So what you're going to do now, I'm going to get situated here. I grabbed a handful like this, because I figured that way is enough to, if I was to roll it out on this surface, there should be enough to completely cover the cardboard. Now we're going to take the pointed end and go through one of these hold up. See what I did there? And then we're going to take another one and go to the next one. I'm going to do a couple of these and then show you why this works. They're all going to end up like this far apart. Okay, if you look at it, it's going in every other loop. The corrugated cardboard is going womp, womp, womp. So, uh, hold on, let me get close enough where you can see. Uh, well, there we go. You see how the corrugated cardboard is making a loop? It's going up and down. Just pick one side, either the, all the ups or all the downs. But that way you have a space like that in between all of your um, skewers. I always use the pointed edge just so it gives me enough room to go in. If you try to put this in with the flat edge, see, it won't go. It, it's not going to work. 
so you have to use that point just so it can get through the little piece of cardboard don't worry that this is not exactly even because when we're done we're going to take and push it down where the point you know to a point where it's flush but I'm just going to go ahead and keep working and then show you what I got in a minute this takes hardly no effort at all if you want it to be permanent you might want to go behind it with you know some duct tape I just use it until it can't be used anymore like when it finally tears up or deteriorates because lye will eat bamboo skewers really quickly so basically you'll get three or four uses out of it but don't expect to get like you know 10 or 12 uses out of it because that's just not going to be an option for you okay now if I wanted to I could actually get those in between like that see how close that is but that would just be annoying and it won't give the same design options on your peacock squirrel as having that little space in there so like I said choose all the ups or all the downs you can't do both Now on some of these, they're like pushing against each other, don't worry about that. And on some of them, there are little pieces of the bamboo coming apart. That happens. I got one piece that literally did this. It just started fraying. And usually if you're using the bamboo skewer for cooking and that happens, that's just, you know go to the next one don't worry about it so forth so on but since I'm not using this for cooking when I see that I just go ahead and manually remove it so I'm telling you if you see that go ahead and manually remove it because otherwise you'll forget and then if it messes up your design by having one wayward strand just doing whatever it's doing while the rest of your design is doing the right thing it will be frustrating for you so if you see it, remove it. Oh, well, wait a minute. That's what I'm talking about. You see that? While I was pushing that through, it just kind of disintegrated like that. Pull that off or just get a whole new skewer and then go ahead and continue on. That wasn't too far gone so I just went ahead and stuck it back through there but if it was so far gone that it's flaking or you know right through the middle of the skewer or whatever then it gets tossed out like that one and then we'll just go to the next one alrighty then Almost finished. Actually, I think I am finished, but we'll just go ahead and put one or two more in here. Like on this side. Just so we could be sure. Well, if you flip it over, keep in mind that the ups that you were working on might be the downs at the point that you flip it over on okay now these are going to go back in my bag for the next use these are skewers i use when i'm making soaps and there's a design and i just literally you know scroll the top this is what i've scrolled it with because i found out a long time ago that sticking a plastic fork in there or a plastic spoon or a knife 
yeah I use dedicated equipment so anything that get used for soaping especially you know silverware becomes part of the soap <laughs> in my house anyway I'll be right back to show you what to do next okay for this project you have to go get your slap mode that you're using I do have a 15 um, bar mode that is what I made the original one out of this is an 18 bar so we can't just automatically assume it's going to be the same size you see that that's not exactly going to fit in there now if I turn it this way I can you know squish it all down Trying to line them up. So give me a second. Now you're going to want to line up using the mode or the side or whatever. So that way they'll be nice and even when you get to the next step. Give me a second. This makes sense to you in a second. Now, when you go to put this in, you see how that's not quite fitting? That's fine. Go ahead and push it down. It will lift up where it can't go. Like this one went in between. That's fine. That means it's not going to fit. So we're going to remove it. Or slide it up basically. So. See how that didn't quite go because of the edges there? That's fine. That means it's time to remove that, that one, that one, this one, and this one. Yeah. Put that back in the bag of skewers if you're saving them. Because technically it never got used for anything, so they're still good. So just put them right back in there. Make sure they're all facing up so that way you don't have to turn them around every time you go to use them. Or facing down depending on how they are in the back. So that way when it's time to make the peacock swirl, all these are facing the same direction. Or you can even do it from this side point is just make sure you got in there so that way once you get the soap in there you put it down at one side and just drag it and then pull it out if you use this side with the points it will still work actually it'll work better but the soap design on the bottom will be much smaller compared to the top but that's how you make the tool okay now, say for instance, you say, hey, that's perfect. I got it exactly the way I want it. Then your next move is to grab your handy dandy duct tape. And don't put the tape on this part. Put the tape on the actual um, skewers. So that way it will anchor them in place. So that way it won't slide. Let me go ahead and slide this down. Oh, that's another thing. Um, I always tend to use the flat edge of skewers because 
Well, let me show you this again. When I put that in there, it goes all the way down and it'll slide and make the design in the soap. This side, if you will notice, the skewers are not exactly even, even when I did this to push it down because some of them are larger and some of them are smaller so forth so on. You actually have to turn it around, well take your liner out so that way you're not uh, messing up your liner because silicone can puncture. But then you push it down so that way this is all even but instead of going through all that I just flip it around this way so that way boom um the edges might be a little you know but that's the part where you'd be trimming it off anyway so it's not going to really matter and then you put your liner back in when you make your soap you have that all nice and ready to go now, since I'm going to use this side, let me push that back down since it slid on up. I'm going to just go ahead and push all these down, make sure they're flush at the bottom. So some of them will lift up. Ouch, that's a little sharp. I'm going to flip this over so I can work. I'm going to point it this way because this is the side I want to tape. Now, I'm going to stick the tape like this so it can hang over. That makes sense to you in a second. Now, I'm going to put that like that. But actually, I don't want the paper part on there. Let's get it above that. And now we're going to turn it around. Let me give this a lift right quick. That way, it's ready for the next use. Now we're going to push this so that way it attaches to the piece right next to it on the inside or whatever. Then I would tape this a couple more times and tape it onto the paper itself, so the cardboard, so that way it's stabilized. But let me take care of something right quick. Grab the stuff out the way if you decide to get up to move it all. So that way when you go sit down, you're not sitting down on sharp things that you have put there. 
Yeah. When I got the heart way <laughs> a few years back. Yeah. <coughs> now that the tape has been attached to the skewers on this side. It's okay to go ahead and put it on the paper part. And then flip it over. See how I did that? See, that's why I was put a lip on there. So that way it's easy to remove. And I'm just going to go ahead and put it like that. So that way it's smooth selling on both sides. Uh, there we go. this part I'm just going to go ahead and tear this just slightly and fold it over so that way there's no sharp edges and my tool is ready to go most people will be using the pointed edge um, if I bought some good skewers you know, like from some place that wasn't Walmart, <laughs> each skewer will be absolutely the same exact measurement, so forth, so on, and it will be absolutely positively even, and that would be fine. That's how I made the original one. But this is a generic thing, so that's why they are not exactly even. In fact, this one is crooked, and as you can tell, it's literally pushing into the one next to it. But up at the top, all of them have a space in between. So this is actually the more even side compared to this part. So this is the side I will be using. Now let me tell you what you can do for the little points that will be really irritating. Let me trim this off right quick. There we go. Now, what a lot of people don't realize, you can actually cut right through this with the average pair of um, utility scissors. So you can literally take off all the points. See? Hold on. It's hard to see in this viewfinder. Right there. You see where I took off the points? That way they're not sticking up at me. But say for instance, I don't feel like dealing with, you know, cutting through something or whatever. <coughs> Here's another way to get rid of those points. First, you take your duct tape. Put a lip on it so that way it doesn't get in your way for your next use. would help if I didn't have my hand stuck to it. <laughs> there we go. Now you see what I just did? And you just literally fold it over. And now you have no points to stick it. And you go ahead and cut that. And now, your peacock tool is officially complete. It's useful, everything has its purpose, and it's safe. It can't hurt you, being the one that's, you know, 
going to use it. Now, the next thing we're going to do is get another um, piece of cardboard so we could do the S curve. Give me a second. Didn't quite get up all the coffee. And that's too close to my plug and my electrical, so yeah. Let me make sure. There we go. I'll put them out right there just in case I need to go grab it again. Now, let's see. Another piece of cardboard. This will do. Now, this doesn't have to be so big. You only need four skewers for this one. not putting the skewers through here this time, you're putting them through the middle. One, two, three, four. Now, see how I got that? They're off center of each other. So you're going to put one here, one here, one here, one here. Now, on this one, it doesn't matter if it's pointed or not, it just matters that it's even. So just make sure it's absolutely positively even. That way, after you make the peacock squirrel, or the non-parallel, when you go like this, this gives you the S tool that's going to go zigzagging in between. So, basically, you got to make sure it's flat and facing the correct direction. I'm just going to slide it down make sure it's even with the top of the mold. And then, see how I got that? I just made sure it was completely even. I got my hand there still. You'll see why in a second. I got to see. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. I knew I had to sneeze, I just didn't know when it was going to come, and I knew I wasn't going to have time to go get, you know, a tissue or something. <laughs> Excuse me, in advance. Now, let me go ahead and lift this back up. So we want this to be flush. And now, I'm just going to take this piece of tape and anchor it just like that. enough for the bottom. Slide that up. Slide this side up. There we go. Oh, 
Uh oh. That takes duck hook stuff. There we go. Now. And I'm about to make a peacock squirrel either sometime today or tomorrow early. So you'll see exactly how I use these. So this is the S tool. As you can tell, it's off center. So that way, when you go like this, it connects the two or three points. And then we have this. So I am ready for my peacock swirl. Yeah. And this is going to be in the other room just like this so that way I can set it up the way I need to and then when it's time to you know move it aside put the colors in I'm not even going to use a um, squirt bottle or a squeeze bottle as they call them I have a um, my small cups have like an extended handle so basically I'm just going to go very you know with the point of the handle well the hold on I'll just show you I'm using this kind of pot or measurement cup. Look at the top. It has a elongated spout. So basically I'm just gonna very carefully pour it and then next color pour it, next color pour it, and that should be okay. And then use the tool make sure everything's liquid I got a recipe that's got a lot of lard in it just to help out the process and then it's going to be a very very liquidy pour I've made this before so I already know going in it's going to be about a four day wait <laughs> it's like going to take that long just to be solid so I'll take you with me when I do the pour when I do the uh, peacock swirl and when I um, go to cut it which should be like almost a week from now I'll go ahead and show you then so this has been people 7 on Twitter and YouTube people are elsewhere or on the internet my blog is located purple butterfly dash people dot blogspot dot com my soaps purple butterfly soaps could be okay people dot etsy dot com my t-shirt designs purple butterfly dash people dot tmail that com. Y'all say blessed day too. Bye now. And I'm getting the hang of this new camera, I'm telling you. <laughs> Talk to y'all later. Bye babies.